Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Bleeding Blue Shirts. John Giannone, Steve Valiquette, as we talk all things Rangers. Stevie, it's been quite a change since about a week and a half ago when we wondered after the second period against St. Louis, where is this team's collective confidence at? How are they going to overcome a deficit at home, which looked like another loss? Rangers end up scoring four in the third that night. They haven't lost since. They've won four in a row. Assess where this team is at right now, given where they were nine, ten days ago. Well, in a much better place. I think the common denominator is how well they've defended in the third period. And, you know, you fast forward to the next game, which was Wednesday in Vegas, and the Rangers completely shut Vegas down in the third period in that game, John. Vegas had four shots. They had no scoring chances. They were all perimeter shots. And then you carried over into Colorado, which was a depleted team that played really hard and they were hard to play against. I, I love the Devils game. Same idea. The Rangers are down 3-1 early in the second period, and they're able to come back in that game and win 4-3 in overtime. And I think the big thing, once again, though, that you can't get past is the fact they shut the Devils down and didn't allow them to score in the third period. That, to me, tells me this team has really turned the corner, and it's allowing their best player, Igor Shosturkin, to step up and be that guy again. That's the common denominator to me is being able to shut it down, lock it down in the third periods. All right, you mentioned the name and be that guy again. What what do you see from Igor Shosturkin recently that has made him that guy again versus what we saw earlier in the season? I guess stepping up in the big moments, there was a big swing moment in the second period against the Devils where the Rangers were on the power play. They were just clicking, moving it around, gaining a lot of momentum. And then Hollick comes out of the box and Shosturkin has to make a breakaway save. We also saw a lot of talk after the game about the Hughes penalty shot that Shesterkin sopped. Now, I liked those moments. They were high moments for me, but none was better than when Hughes stepped into the slot when the Devils were on the power play in the second period. There's about three minutes remaining. Mm -hmm. And he went to make a backdoor pass to Nico Heischer. And it went off VC's skate, and then Shesterkin had to go into a full split. The reason why that to me is the turning moment is because he was tracking the pass and not leaving before. Remember a few weeks ago when Tatar was on his backhand on the two on one, similar idea where he sure was on the back door, but Tatar went backhand when Shesterkin was leaning away from his post. That tells me everything a goalie is going through mentally. There's a lack of belief during moments in the season where you don't have trust and faith that your back door is covered. That's why Shesterkin three weeks ago was leaning and now he's tracking. I'm wearing my uh, tracksuit jacket, John, because I just got off the ice an hour ago. Mm -hmm. and I always talk about the puck coming across the zipper. And when the puck gets across the zipper, that's when the goalie has to continue to track it and move. And the thing about the play that I'm referring to with Hughes making that attempted pass to Heischer is the pass never got across the zipper, which is why Shesterkin didn't move early and he was able to kick his right leg out and make the save. He was on the pass. And when he's doing that, all of his skills just show up. His talent just shows up. He's, e he's always able to be the best version of himself mm -hmm. under those conditions. When I have seen him fight it a little bit, it's because he's leaving early. And, and this is the deal. I think this is hard for him sometime. His hockey intellect is so high that he sees the play developing before it does. So he assumes the position that he can get the jump on the play. And he doesn't need to do that. Sometimes he just needs to calm down a little bit, do what's important. His process would include tracking the pass the right way, then he can make a big save. And that's why that skilled save shows up. That's why he's turning the corner. The team's defending better. These are all really good signs for the Rangers. And that not overthinking thing is exactly what Henrik Lundqvist talked about during the game against the Devils the other night. All right, it all sets up for what should be, to me, probably the most intriguing game of the year so far. So you got the Rangers, four straight wins. You got the Toronto Maple Leafs coming to the Garden on Thursday, four straight wins, points in 14 straight games, uh, maybe 15 now, actually. And, and Samsonov, who has back-to-back -back shutouts. Size up this Toronto Maple Leafs team, which after a couple weeks of the season, Steve, there was speculation in Toronto that the whole thing might get blown up. 
You bet. You bet. They had a really tough West Coast trip at the beginning of the year. They were questioning everything. And right now, I actually think we're going to see Matt Murray in this game because that's those are the calls that I've made this morning as we prepare for the pregame show. What I anticipate, though, is a very difficult team to play against offensively. The interesting thing about the way the team is set up, and right now Tavares is playing with Mitch Marner. Mm -hmm. They are setting up mini rush plays in their own zone, which is very difficult to defend against. It's amazing to me to watch them as a team because they're very strong in transition, where they will transition in the neutral zone and be able to come back on a counter, but they're not that strong getting out of their own zone on a rush play that starts behind their goal line. Similar to Chris Kreider's goal against the Devils, where the Rangers have four passes that get them up the ice and score, the Toronto Maple Leafs don't seem to be built like that this year, and they know it. So they will have transition offense that's significant, but when they get into their offensive zone setup, that's where they're very difficult, John. Watch them play, and they're going to reload in the offensive zone. They'll circle up to the blue line, Marner will. He'll come downhill with speed, and Tavares will be parked on the side of the net with a 45 position waiting for a pass. Uh, Matthews and Nylander are doing the same thing. And amazingly, going into last night's game, those four guys accounted for 66% of all the goals scored by the Toronto Maple Leafs since November 1st. So they're front loaded and you have to shut down those four guys that are so dynamic in the offensive zone at creating these mini rush plays. Is it fair to call Thursday night's game a measuring stick game for the Rangers to really get a handle on how far beyond that five losses in six they are and how close they may be to regaining a lot of the mojo that carried them last year? You're right. It's so difficult right now to predict what they're going to do in the next five games because the only predictor of future success or failure is past success or failure. And take a look at the last five games, John. What can we really take from the loss against Chicago, followed up by the comeback victory against St. Louis, against two depleted teams in Vegas and Colorado, and then you're playing against the team that comes into the garden with an 11 game win streak and the Devils and the Rangers come from behind and win. What are we talking about here? I mean, are we are we gonna say there's a theme to those last five games? I don't see one. So I'm having a hard time saying, this is the benchmark game. This is how we're gonna measure ourselves because they have been pretty helter skelter in the last five games. However, you're playing against an amazing regular season team in the Toronto Maple Leafs. An amazing, built for the regular season team that's hard to play against in the regular season. Do you notice I just said regular season three yeah, times? Three times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's uh, it's always there's always a footnote I think when we talk about the Toronto Maple Leafs because of how they haven't had success in the playoffs. But they're such a good regular season team that it'll be a great test. And I'm looking forward to seeing how the Rangers manage it because one thing that I'll take away from the Devils game too that I thought was interesting. Going into it, everybody in the NHL knows the Devils are the best team off the rush in the league. They've had the most chances, the most quality chances. They've scored 37 times off the rush, most in the NHL. What did the Rangers do? They pretty much shut them down off the rush. The Devils didn't score a goal off the rush. They had 14 chances off the rush, but nine of which were low danger, which is a good spread. The Rangers had three goals themselves off the rush in the game. So you, you j just wonder how the Rangers are being able to posture themselves and prepare themselves for how they are playing their next opponent. They have to pick up where they left off against the Devils, where they really did have a performance. It's going to be an awesome night on Thursday, 6.30 for the pregame. Steve and I are going to cover it in depth, and then Sam and Joe have the call. I'll be between the benches, and Steve will be with us throughout the night, including the postgame show. Join us all Thursday night, Rangers and Maple Leafs. It's going to be a lot of fun, Stevie. Thanks, bud. Looking forward to it, buddy.